So the samples get placed in the loader to start with, and then the robot picks the sample, chemistry sample, puts it out onto the track, and then it detects that it's a chemistry sample because of the barcode that's on that sample. And uh, because it's a chemistry sample, it's not going to go through the tube top. It's going to do it in a different way. It's going to take the tube top off. So it will bring it to this uh, position here, and it takes a photograph of the top of the tube, and it says, is there a top on that tube that's for chemistry tests? It will then spin the uh, tube top off and drop it into a waste chute. And then it takes another picture of the tube and says, has the top actually been removed? When it confirms that it's actually gone, then it can let the sample go to the track and the sample will then make its way to the chemistry machine. And that's the same for a gel tube, which is a brown top, or for a yellow top tube, which is for glucose. So what is the biochemistry, the green one? No, the brown one the brown is the chemistry. The and the yellow is uh, chemistry, for, but just for glucose, fluoride oxalate tube. Okay, so the sample's being taken in. This is the manual sampling from the front of the machine, but also the back of the machine goes out over the track. So you can sample calibrators or QCs from the front of the machine, quality controls, or patient samples if they're small or they're precious samples. But also out over the back of the track, we've got automatic sampling. What happens is that the sample arm, which you can see here, will take a, a sample tip, plastic sample tip, and we'll come down into the quality control pot, take a small aliquot, and place it into a plastic cuvette, which looks like that. Everything on this machine is disposable because we're trying to reduce the carryover uh, from one sample to the next, or from one test to the next. So everything is plastic and is thrown away, rather than it being a glass cuvette where you've got that risk of carryover. And you can see that things are washing in between the tests being done so that the reagent probes and the sample probes are all washed before they uh, do the next test. Is there going to be anything moving or flying around? Or? It should move in a minute, honest. <laughs> Here. Down this there you go. So uh, it's actually now taking a pipette tip. It's going into the sample here. There's a small amount of sample which is being placed into the plastic cuvette there. And now it gets rid of the cuvette tip. It takes another one for the next test. Puts it into the plastic cuvette. So it's a separate plastic tip for each test, and it's a separate cuvette for each test. And then the assay on this machine will take uh, between 20 minutes and 40 minutes, usually. And the results are produced by chemiluminescence, so we're looking for a large flash of light, or how big or how long that flash of light lasts. And then that flash of light is calibrated against uh, standard known values of calibrator. So we'll set up a calibration curve and then compare those, that flash of light with the calibration curve. You can see here that it's taking more cuvettes into the ring. There, you can see. And then it slides them down and they go into this incubation ring which is round here for the assay to be completed. If we move round to the side of the machine we can see the reagents. Okay, so what different reagents do we have here? We've got um, about 30 different reagent spaces, um, mainly hormones but occasionally drug assays or um, virology type assays can be done on the same sort of machine. If we go from the left hand side we've got uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, 3T4, 3T3, uh, hematinics, so we've got vitamin B12, uh, folic acid, folate and ferritin. And then you can see total HCG which might be as a tumour marker or for pregnancy. Um, PSA, prostate specific antigen, which is another tumour marker, LH and FSH hormones, and then various uh, unusual assays like prolactin, estradiol, cortisol, as we move to the right hand side. We're also doing troponins as a tumour marker on this machine, so we do troponin I. 
and digoxin, which is a heart drug. We've got a reagent pack here, and it's got several different reagents contained in the different things. Um, so the probes will come, there's a reagent one probe, a two probe, and a three probe, and they will come out over the pack and take the different uh, solutions at different times in the assay over the 20 minutes or 40 minutes so that you get uh, the right reaction taking place and the antibody and antigen will form a complex and then at the end of it you put uh, the uh, reagents in to produce that flash of light that I was talking about before. You can see that it's taking a bit of reagent from there and placing it into that cuvette which is on the incubation rig. Because of the barcodes, it will know what tests need to be done on this sample. Yes, yeah. And that's the whole lab computer that's controlling that.